sister had class, our whole family's got class. Are you prepared for Jehovah's return? Because if you're not, I have a pamphlet for that. Well, you. Who are you calling a witch, witch? You might remember LaWanda Page portraying the affable Aunt Esther on Sanford and Son. But her iconic performance might never have been possible if not for some very serendipitous encounters. So how did LaWanda go from a struggling exotic dancer to the forefront of comedy? Well, the answer lies in divine favor and a little help from an old friend. Donna. Let me at her. Her behind is mine. <laughs> Red Fox managed to single-handedly save her from the declining trajectory of her career by offering her a shot at stardom in Sanford and Son. But despite the show's success, things weren't all that good for LaWanda. So what exactly happened to her behind the scenes that she turned her back on Hollywood? Let's find out. LaWanda Page's birth name was Alberta Richmond, and she was born on October 19, 1920 in Mississippi to Estella and Willie Richmond. Far from having a serene childhood, LaWanda and her mother moved to Cleveland, Ohio after her mother left Willie Richmond. In Cleveland, her mother remarried Charles Murray, and this was the point at which LaWanda's life began to take root. LaWanda's early years in Ohio were marked by her passion for performing and recognizing her desire to be in front of an audience and focused her efforts on dancing. By the age of seven, she would gather four other little girls daily and together they would go to the local black downtown section, lining up on the streets and dancing to folk songs. This routine garnered attention and when crowds gathered, Luanda would take the lead and stun audiences with performances like the Charleston, Cakewalk and Black Bottom. They became so skilled that they could collect as much as 20 to 25 cents a day after each performance. This was considered substantial income, especially for children around six or seven. Little Lawanda was not only making a decent income, but she also developed a larger audience when she transitioned from street performances to showcasing her talents at a community center. Miss Page was making strides in her career at a young age. But a significant change occurred when her family left Ohio and relocated to St. Louis. In this new environment, LaWanda didn't immediately resume dancing on the streets due to her unfamiliarity with the community. Instead, she shifted her focus to her studies at Banneker Elementary School. During her time in St. Louis, LaWanda encountered a mischievous boy at school who had a knack for comedic storytelling. This young boy turned out to be Red Fox and the two quickly became close friends. Despite their age difference, they shared the same dream of making it in show business. LaWanda aimed to achieve this through dancing, while Red Fox pursued singing and comedy. She had the nerve to call us witches. <laughs> and she was right, you three ugly witches. <laughs> As they entered their teen years, their paths diverged. Red Fox left for Chicago, while LaWanda concentrated on reviving her dormant dance career. With street dancing no longer a viable option and no professional dance schools available for young black teens in her area, LaWanda practiced her dance moves at local parties and gatherings. Her skillful performances attracted admirers, including a guy named John Peel. Their romance was torrentious, and in 1934, when LaWanda was just 14, they married. However, LaWanda soon discovered that John lacked financial stability, and aside from a few dates and meals, he struggled to fulfill his promises to provide for her. LaWanda had to resort to exotic dancing to support herself and her daughter, who was born a year after the marriage. Despite facing tough competition from older performers, she sought to distinguish herself by perfecting her act. With patience and a lot of practice, she transformed into a fire dancer by the age of 18, performing under the stage name, The Bronze Goddess. As the years pressed on, she kept afloat but faced the challenge of aging in the exotic dancing industry, an inevitable death sentence. LaWanda returned to Los Angeles in 1952 and performed at the Brass Rail Club, sometimes working as a waitress. Backstage after a performance, the club owner overheard LaWanda's witty banter with comedians. 
leading him to offer her a job doing stand-up comedy for $125 a week, a lofty sum for the time. Lawanda quickly found success in comedy and eventually joined the veteran comedy duo Skillet and Leroy, performing with them for over 15 years. During this time, they recorded several raunchy comedy albums. In the early 1970s, a white producer named Aaron Russo discovered Lawanda's talent while watching her perform with Skillet and Leroy. Impressed by her sassiness, he recommended her for a role in the show Sanford and Son. Red Fox, who was part of the Sanford and Son cast and knew Lawanda from their childhood, facilitated her audition and vouched for her. Although Lawanda didn't fit the original girlfriend role they had in mind, Red Fox's insistence led the producers to cast her as Aunt Esther, a character with a different demeanor that suited her profile. Breaking onto the small screen marked a significant turning point in her career and one that would be extremely uncomfortable. Did you? Where was that, Lawanda? Yeah, in St. Louis. Ah. Uh. And uh, he says, yeah, I said, Lawanda would be the one. So Red gets on the phone, calls me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And I hadn't heard from Red, you know, in a long, long time. And um, anyway, he says, come on out and read for Jane Murray. And I said, so I'm not going to and read for Jane Murray. I said, I went to Red for her once before, and B. Richards got the part. He says, come on out and read. He says, I know you're going to get it, because I know what you can do. So I went out the next morning to the studio, and I read for Jane. I impressed her, and she's a wonderful person, a very lovely person. And uh, then I read for Aaron again, and the next thing I knew, I was down in rehearsal hall three, and the next thing I knew, I was in Esther. Luanda Page seemed to be on the right track as her career fell into place, but there was a hiccup. On the set of Sanford and Son, she faced challenges following directions. She often walked in the wrong direction, faced the camera incorrectly, and struggled with her lines. This led the producer, Aaron Russo, to consider letting her go. However, Red Fox intervened and once again insisted on giving her a chance to improve. Red Fox took this opportunity to work closely with Lawanda, helping her get into character. Despite her initial struggles, Fox recognized that she wasn't immersing herself in the role. He urged her to bring her own personality and attitude into the role of Aunt Esther. Lawanda took this advice to heart, and when rehearsals resumed, she transformed the character, adding her unique flair. Did Red uh, coach you or anything? Yes, all, yes. We see, at first, uh, my first week there, I had never worked TV before. I just worked nightclubs. See, I used to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing comedy. And, uh, I was so nervous the first week, you know, and uh, I didn't know exactly what to do. I thought you had to be an actress, mm -hmm. you know, this is what I thought. And I said, gosh, I'm no actress. I never thought I was an actress, you know. I would just do what comes naturally, just like I do now on TV. I, whatever comes natural, that's what I do, uh -huh. you know. And uh, I hadn't seen Red in quite some time since he had got to be a big star, and I didn't know whether Red you know, felt the same way by me like he did years ago. And I was nervous about that. And then every day they changed the script, and I didn't know that, you know. And I'd go home and I'd study so hard. And the next day I'd go back, some lines were changed, you know. And I didn't know, you know that they did all this. And so they were going to let me go. And Red says, no, you're not going to let Lawanda go because I know what Lawanda can do. He says, give me a week. Give me just one day with Lawanda. Say, so let her come over to my place here on the side. The change was remarkable, and Lawanda Page's performance as Aunt Esther became a hit. She infused the character with her signature sassiness, using gesticulation and facial expressions to get emotions across where words couldn't. The producers began giving her more screen time. Lawanda quickly became one of the most popular characters on Sanford and Son, enjoying the success that rivaled Red Fox and Demond Wilson's. But the set was never without scandal, and Lawanda had to confront rumors of being involved in the drug scene behind the scenes. According to gossip, she allegedly brought cocaine and weed backstage for the cast and crew. Damon Wilson did mention Lawanda's involvement with drugs on camera. These claims remain speculative and their authenticity is uncertain. As the years progressed and the 1980s approached, Sanford and Son faced challenges, leading to its end in 1977. Although there were brief discussions about a spinoff for Lawanda, nothing materialized. She continued to make guest appearances in shows like Different Strokes, where she played Cousin Myrtle. 
However, despite the success of her early career, finding permanent work in Hollywood became difficult. In the face of a drying up show business, Lawanda returned to her roots in stage comedy, but this too would not bring any substantial success. Despite not landing major gigs, she remained popular on the comedy circuit. Lawanda faced the challenge of adapting to a rapidly changing entertainment landscape while also caring for her elderly mother. In the latter part of the 80s, Lawanda Page faced declining health, which impacted her performances. Despite small appearances such as in the movie Friday, she largely stayed out of the public eye. It is unclear if she continued with her comedy specials during this period, but it was clear that her energy and strength dwindled. As she aged, her daughter Clara took on a more significant role in caring for her. Luanda Page had a lifelong battle with diabetes, and on September 14, 2002, at the age of 81, she reportedly passed away from a heart attack caused by the condition. No matter her brief career on television, she did manage to touch the hearts of the people who watched her charismatic performances, and that is enough. One thing's for sure, she will always be remembered for this saying, watch it, sucker. What are your thoughts on Lawanda Page's career? What is your favorite line of Von Esther in Sanford and Son? Comment down below.